Okay, welcome to this video. We are going to learn about something called a potential divider circuit. And after we do, we'll see something called a potentiometer, which basically serves as a way to create a potential divider circuit. Let me make sure I got my mic right. Are we good? Yeah? All clear? Testing. One, two. Yes, we're good. We already know a couple of things that will be useful. For example, take a look at the picture on the left. Whenever we have something like this, two resistors in series, together they, they dissipate all 20 volts supplied by the EMF source. But they may not dissipate the 20 volts evenly. If you have a larger resistor on bottom and a smaller resistor on top, then the smaller resistor will dissipate less, a smaller share of the 20 volts. In fact, the way it turns out, this resistor on top, the 2 ohm resistor, would only dissipate 4 volts and the 16 ohm resistor would dissipate 16 volts. So if the resistor on bottom is 4 times as big then the dissipated voltage by the bottom resistor will be 4 times the voltage dissipated by the top resistor. So the ratio of resistance to voltage uh, is the same. And the reason that ratio is the same is because the ratio of voltage to resistance is current. And, as it turns out, the current passing through that uh, top resistor is equal to the current passing through the bottom resistor. And that's why the V over R ratio, whoa, that's why the V over R ratio, whoa, <laughs> let's try this again. That's why the V over R ratio stays the same because these two resistors feel the same current. Okay, we can do something fancy, something fun, something really cool. We can take wires and extend them out. And then we can connect things to those wires. For example, you could connect a night light or a fire alarm. A night light, remember what those are? Those are lights that turn on when it gets dark. Okay. And that's neat because we can create cool devices like a night light. Um, using this kind of setup. So let's say we connect a night light. I like night lights. So do you. Here we go. There it is. Night light. Remember now, the top resistor dissipates 4 volt volts. The bottom resistor dissipates 16 volts. And that means if we connect the night light in parallel with the bottom resistor, the night light will feel 16, it'll receive 16 volts as well because it's in parallel and any two things in parallel will be, uh, will dissipate the same voltage. So in effect what we're doing is we're saying okay night light by connecting you to the circuit you are going to get some but not all you'll get some portion of the 20 volts supplied by the battery. Okay, that's the idea. It may not make much sense right now. You're probably wondering, this is so silly. Why would we po why would we ever connect the night light to a circuit like this? Why wouldn't we just connect the night light to the 20 volts? You know, why not do this? Night light. I mean, doesn't that make more sense? Why waste any energy? Why waste the voltage on that top resistor? Well, there's a good reason to do that. There's a good reason, and we won't be able to see it until we start to see how we can replace resistors here with sensors. We can replace the resistors with sensors and cool things happen. Okay, so the voltage that we supply into the circuit, the voltage produced by the battery, right? the voltage supplied by the battery, the 20 volts, sometimes we call that V in and the voltage which is made available to the night light or whatever else you connect we call it V out. So that's what these notes say. V out. Um, and we can replace the two values of R with just generic R1, R2, that's what that is. And now I've shown V out right there. It's the voltage made available to the night light or whatever else you connect. And V in is what we've also been calling the EMF. We call it VN in this special case where the circuit looks just like this. So a question for you, right? 
Look at this question here, and you can read the hint above it if you want. A question. If we increase R2, let's say we make R2 a variable resistor, and that line through it means it's a variable resistor, and then we start turning the knob, turning the dial, so that R2 gets bigger and bigger and bigger. What will happen? Well, the portion that R2 consumes, how much of the 20 volts R2 dissipates, will increase. Maybe R2 will initially dissipate 10 volts. And then we increase the value of resistance, and it now takes up 12. And then it takes up 14, and then 16. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So the share of the 20 that it consumes increases. If the value of the voltage across R2 increases, then V out increases as well, because V out is in parallel with R2. What if instead we take R1, we make that our variable resistor, and we lower the knob, we turn the knob so that the resistance here of R1 gets smaller and smaller and smaller. If we do that, then by comparison, we're increasing R2's resistance by comparison. Here's another, another way to see that. If we lower the resistance on R, R1, up here, we lower its resistance, then the share that it consumes will maybe be 10 volts, so this takes 10 volts, and then it goes down to 8 volts, which means this one consumes more of the 20. And then R1 consumes an even smaller share as we lower its resistance, as we lower R, R1. And so this would be 14. And then this might be 4 if we keep turning that knob, that dial, and that goes up to 16. So if R1, if R1 is lowered in resistance, then this voltage across R2, hence also V out, increases. V out grows or it increases. Okay. Now it's possible mathematically to prove that the value of output voltage is equal to R2 over the total resistance, which is just R1 plus R2, assuming there's nothing connected, if there's no circuit connected, times the EMF. This is something we can prove. If you want to see it proved, uh, come, come see me, or maybe I'll make a video. But we're not going to worry about the proof right now. This equation, this equation, says the exact same thing as this bullet right here. This is the qualitative description, which communicates the same info as this mathematical description. That circuit right there, boom, the one we've been looking at for so long. Oh my gosh, how long is it? 18, 8 minutes already. We're 8 minutes in. That circuit is called a potential divider circuit. Not a circus, a circuit. And a potential divider circuit is so important, it deserves at least eight minutes of your attention. More, <laughs> which is why the video is not yet over. All right, here we have some questions. These uh, you might see on a test. You might see very similar questions on a test. Let's take a look. We have a potential divider circuit. There it is, sure looks like one to me. You got your top resistor, you got your bottom resistor. But wait a second, <gasps> that's an LDR a light dependent resistor. As you increase the, uh, the light, you decrease the resistance. Cool. Let's see what, what's, what's the question say. In order to increase the reading on the voltmeter, we want to increase the voltage. Hmm. Don't even read the options. Let's figure it out on our own. We want to increase the voltage. We want the R on bottom to consume a bigger portion of the 12 volts. The way we get it to consume a bigger portion of the 12 volts is by increasing the resistance. So how do you increase the resistance of an LDR? You lower the light intensity. You make it darker. Let's see, does any question, do any option say lower the uh, intensity? Whoa, what, in, in, what is going on? Intensity, yikes, long day. So we have to lower the intensity. What are the, what are the options? Temperature, no. Temperature doesn't change what happens to an LDR. 
It's not a thermistor up there, it's an LDR. Light intensity should be increased. Uh, what did we say? No, we said lower the light intensity. D is the answer. Number two, in the circuit below, which will cause the greatest increase? The greatest increase in the voltmeter's reading. Hmm, let's take a look. We want to make that big, which means we want to increase the voltage dropped across that resistor on bottom. We want it to consume more of the supplied 12 volts. So uh, there's no LDR on bottom. Oh, here's the LDR. It's not a thermistor, that's an LDR. Okay, how do we make the voltage on bottom bigger? Well, to make the voltage on bottom bigger, we want to lower the share of voltage consumed by the top resistor. We want it to consume less of the 12 volts. That means we need the top resistor to have a smaller resistance compared to the bottom resistor. So how do we make a smaller resistance if this thing is an LDR? Whatever you do to resistance, you do the opposite to the light intensity. You make it brighter. So let's see, do any choices say make it brighter? Increase the intensity. Yep, there it is. Not temperature. We don't want to decrease. We want an increase in intensity. Okay, there's one final thing that we can use a potential divider circuit to do. Remember how we said some devices, when you change the value of voltage across the device, you get a different value of current, right? You change how much, how big the battery is uh, that the device is connected to, like here's my device. You connect it to one battery, like a 9 volt battery, and you get some amount of current through it, 2 amps. All right, 9 volts, 2 amps. You get a bigger battery, you measure the current, and it's like that, right? In some devices, you do enough data points, to collect enough data points, you get a graph like that that's straight. Those devices are called ohmic. Other devices, they don't make an ohmic shape. They make a non, uh, they make a curved shape, not a straight line. We call those non-ohmic when their IV graph is not a straight line through the origin. Okay. A question though, how do we generate those graphs in the first place? I mean, it's sort of annoying to have a bunch of different batteries Right? So how do we generate these graphs? One of the ways we can do it is with a potential divider circuit. So we have our normal potential divider circuit, a resistor on top, a resistor on bottom. And what we connect is our test device. Whatever you want to measure the IV characteristics of, that's the test device. But don't draw this yet because we're going to make some uh, erase. We're going to erase some things and add some things in. Right? Now, these two resistors can, if we want, they could both be variable resistors. So you can turn the knobs of the resistors, and by doing so, you change the output voltage that the test device gets. Right? How much does it uh, is it supplied? What portion of the input voltage? which is also the EMF. What portion does it get? Well, it depends on what these values of resistance are. Okay. But we need a way to measure the voltage. So we connect a voltmeter so that we can collect our data and generate the graph. And we also need a way to measure the current through our test device. So we put an ammeter in, connect it in series like that. And when you adjust those knobs, you'll be able to generate different values of V and measure the resulting value of I. It might seem kind of weird, though, uh, and annoying to have to get two different variable resistors like that. Those two there, that's annoying. So instead, what we can do is we can get something called a potentiometer, which looks like this. And a potentiometer basically serves as the two variable, resistor, variable resistors all packed into one thing. So there you go, there's your potentiometer, and then you connect it to your device that you're testing. You put your voltmeter in parallel and your ammeter in series. And that does the trick using a potentiometer. 
which serves as two variable resistors.